Histamine is part of your immune response. It's part of your inflammatory response. It's one of the things that like you think about a hive, that's a pretty classic histamine example. There's some sort of insult there, whether it's a cut or um, some sort of allergen, right? And you get in a, that allergic hive, it vasodilates. So you get all that fluid rushing there. So it brings immune cells. It's one of the things that kind of like recruits the white cells, like come to this area and deal with this problem. So it's really important for as part of our normal immune response and part of our allergy response. It also does a bunch of other things. It's a neurotransmitter. It's part of some, your wake sleep cycle. If you think about certain antihistamines make you sleepy, it's because they block histamine in your brain. Um, so there's different histamine receptors throughout your body, but that's one place that it works. It is important in stomach acid secretion and gastric motility. It's important in uterine contraction. It um, has a relationship with some female hormones. It's also part of like sexual arousal and there's just all of these things that, that it does. So histamine intolerance is you are releasing too much histamine or you can't process it properly. So sometimes people will find like, I went on a whole 30, right? I went on this great diet. I started eating kombucha and sauerkraut and tons of avocados and all of these healthy, but high histamine foods and their symptoms flared. So that's one issue, or somebody just has like a chronic ongoing inflammatory or immune or infection kind of burden, which could be, you know, you mentioned Lyme, uh, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, different H. pylori, lots of different gut infections, or even just general dysbiosis. Some of those like ongoing things, or you have like an ongoing chemical exposure, or your detox is just not up to snuff, and you're not able to clear histamine out. So you can either have it as like, it developed when I made this change or I moved or I got exposed to mold or I got this infection. We're seeing some more histamine intolerance with people post COVID. Sometimes it's just this ongoing accumulative sort of immune burden that triggers some of this. And then the kind of the third way, which happened to be what I had uh, when I was dealing with this is that you just have some genetic snips. You don't process histamine properly. Now, remember, genes are just one part of the equation, right? We've got a gene that might predispose you to this, but if you can clean up your diet and lifestyle, then those genes are not going to be such an issue for the most part. So there's various enzymes in your body that clear out histamine. We've got DAO enzyme, DAO in your intestines. We've got um, HNMT um, and we've got NAT2, which is more in your bladder. So you've got like ways that your body tries to get rid of histamine. So when you think about histamine related symptoms, you can have, again, so many things, so much stuff with gut. You can have reflux um, or GERD. You can have issues with, you know, loose stools and cramping. You can have more painstrual menstrual cramps, you can have an irregular cycle, you can have breast tenderness, you can have a lot of mood stuff when it comes to like irritability, could be fatigue, but insomnia or agitation, especially like if you ate a high histamine food and of course, lots of skin rashes. So any kind of itching that's unexplained, it kind of comes and goes. When it comes to histamine intolerance, so much of it can be resolved with a healthier gut, not all but some high histamine foods tend to be aged and fermented. Certain good greens like spinach is a high histamine food, avocado, shellfish, it, a lot of um, dairy grains can be higher histamine, nuts. So when you think about histamine, the best analogy is a bucket. All of our stuff that gets cleared, you know, you've got a flow coming in and then the drain coming out. The drain coming out is your enzymes, it's usually liver detoxification or some way that you're moving that out. The easiest thing with to kind of know if this is you is to stop the flow coming in. So if you can decrease those foods for seven to 14 days and you feel much better, you kind of dumped your bucket. 